Welcome to The Rock Focus, a podcast for rockers, newbies, and veterans, and everyone in between. We're hosted by M.A. Lee with the assistance of Remy Black and Edie Rooms, all from Rockers, Inc. Books. Our focus is productivity, process, craft, and tools. Each episode lasts as long as it takes to fix a quick dinner, grab a short commute, or take a brisk walk. Resources and links are in the show notes. Visit us at therockfocus.blogspot.com. Now, on to this week's episode. The Rock Focus turns its lens on every writer's secret monster, writer's block. We say the mantra, writer's block, doesn't exist. But something more than simple disruptions and distractions can interfere with our writing, creating insurmountable walls. The Rock Focus in the series Defeat Writer's Block analyzes the three most common types of writer's block and offers solutions to overcome and defeat this monster looming over the writer's desk. The best solution, though, is Leo Tolstoy's mantra, No Days Without Lines, Nulla Die Sine Linea. Make that your own mantra. Information for this series comes from host M.A. Lee's guidebook, Think Like a Pro, a new advent for writers, showcasing seven lessons to change your perspective from hobby writer to pro writer. See the show notes for links. Can you name a phrase that every writer fears? Try writer's block. We all have a deep-seated fear when we hear those two words side by side, writer's block. Those should be forbidden to speak. We writers have quite a number who claim there's no such thing as writer's block, and I'm one of them. But I will admit that I find myself refusing to write or avoiding my desk or just stuck on a story. Distractions and disruptions occur And before we know it, weeks, not days, weeks have passed. With few words written, our writing plans are blown, guilt descends, and the clouds of guilt and disappointment and dismay and more disruptors descend, and gosh, we don't even want to think about it. That's the purpose of this series. We want to defeat that writer's block, and to do that, We have to look more closely at it than we want to. In this February month of love, let's look at what prevents us from pursuing our love of writing. Writer's block doesn't exist. Let's look at that again. Writer's block does not exist. I'm speaking heresy in the writing community. Do you know someone who claims to suffer from writer's block? Have you yourself ever said, I'm blocked. I can't write anything. I have struggled many, many times with that ailment. I even believed that diagnosis for a few years. Because no words would come from my fiction, I thought I was blocked. Even as I wrote lesson plans and created quizzes and composed emails. Then a couple of things dawned on me. The first dawning came in my search to end my own block. I realized that block meant to be unable to put words on the page. That certainly wasn't the problem. I could put words on the page. That's when I discovered that true writer's block is an impossibility. The second dawning came when I saw that a major life crossroad was coming. I thought of all the ways that I had pursued excellence in my job performance, a job that I enjoyed, even though parts of it were hell. If ever I were to achieve my dream of writing professionally, I would need to pursue excellence in my job performance of writing. Writing needed to become my focus. With the approach of that major crossroad, I needed to choose. Did I want to continue devoting all my brain energies and creativity to a job that would soon end? Or did I want to pursue my dream? Time for my dream. 
Oh, I still devoted myself to my job during the work hours. Yet I began to scrupulously maintain the compartments of work and home. I refused to take work home with me. I set up a plan. I set up long-term and short-term goals. And I began to change the focus of my off hours. Brain tired, energy zapped, creativity sucked. I still managed to put words on the page when I came home from work and finished the day's obligations. 250 words, then 500 words. A thousand words after work became a celebration. Many Saturdays became blissful days because I woke fresh and could spend the day writing in two-hour increments, eight to 10, one to three, four to six, eight to 10. Even on the days when the muse danced away in a dark forest that I couldn't reach, I managed words on page. Even when I gutted everything I had written for five straight days, I still achieved. The daily word account worked steadily to build a scene. The scene built into a chapter. Chapters built into a novel. I met the short-term goals, then the long-term goals, and kept going. The Heretical Belief of Writer's Block Heresy is an opinion contrary to generally accepted beliefs, according to Merriam-Webster, my go-to dictionary. I'm heretical because I believe it is impossible to suffer from writer's block. Truly impossible. I can hear the clamor for a beheading, even as I top away in my little wren's nest. Listen to me now, or you will forever be a victim. Writer's block is impossible. Remember the definition of writer's block? To be unable to put words on the page. Is that impossible for you? Even when I could not think of a single character in a scene, I could put words on the page. The words might not have been ones that I wanted to write, but I was still composing lesson plans, creating out of my head worksheets on figurative language guided poetry analysis, test. I composed emails. I wrote letters. I sent messages. I put my name on Christmas cards. I am old fashioned. I was writing, just not the writing that I wanted to do. And the writing that I was doing was sucking all my creative energies. I started cutting the deep composing that I had always done during my work to save creative energies for my goal. I didn't cut it all, but I cut enough. Artists can paint. They may not be painting what they want to. They may hate what's on the canvas. It's boring and useless, they may think. Drivel rather than art. Gimmick rather than truth. But they can apply color to the canvas. That's painting. You may think you're blocked, but you can compose a Facebook message or a tweet, or an email. You can write a blog. Even if in your mind it's boring and useless, drivel rather than art, gimmick rather than truth. Here's the truth about writer's block. Truth survives gimmickry. Artists can repaint. They can change perspective or techniques or even style. They can paint for fun or for anger, to share laughs, or to anticipate burning, a ritual bonfire of the drivel. Every stroke of the brush moves them out of the stoppage they found themselves in. The writer's truth? We also survive gimmickry. We can rewrite. Those boring, useless, dribbling words. We can apply a new viewpoint, or setting, or change the outcome of a scene. We can toss off a quick note, or pen a diatribe. Share it for laughs, or get the fire out of our blood, a burning of what angers us and never needs to enter the sunshine. Every keystroke on the laptop moves us out of the stoppage we find ourselves in. Stoppage does happen. Barriers, blockades, those do come up. But don't call them writer's block. Don't fall into that fallback mentality. As writers, we have to be halfway decent at self-analysis and looking at our foibles and weaknesses and those of other people. We find guys to eliminate our character's flaws and sins. 
Self-analysis can also guide us out of that hard time that people have jokingly call writer's block. Don't joke about it. It's truly hard. But find a way to defeat it. If we must block anything, we should block the petty upsets of life. We learn to admit when we're wrong and keep moving ahead. When we find ourselves dug into deep holes, we have to figure out ways to climb out, whether we're living or writing. We constantly look for ways to improve. We may attend conferences and seminars, but we can teach ourselves 10 months of the year. We spend one month on vacation. The other month is for those widely spaced days when we kick and scream at the world we've created. So our self-analysis that's to determine what is this barrier between us and our writing. When we find ourselves unable to work, we need to diagnose the problem. It's not writer's block. Refuse to say that. We can write. We can put words onto the page. Do you need proof? Try these cure-alls first. Go write an email just saying, Hello, I was thinking about you. I think we need to get together for coffee. Don't back out. Go for that coffee. Write an angry poem or essay or story and burn it afterward. Grant yourself permission to make mistakes and write drivel and burn it. Don't back out. Spindle it up and put a match to it. Sit in front of a keyboard, toss out a bunch of words, and hit delete. Don't back out. Delete. The key to all three of these, they serve as proof that you can still put words on the page. Proof that you do not have writer's block. Your muse will be appalled. Ignore her weeping. Your imp of mischief will shout with glee. Laugh with him. Celebrate words that don't have a purpose and offend that pesky muse. Tell her who is in charge. You are. Writers don't wait on inspiration. We have jobs to do. We're learning to think like a pro. We're after a new advent for our writing. Pros have deadlines. They have to put out a product, no matter what, or they don't get paid. While they know their necessary daily output, they also schedule in a cushion that covers any disruptions. They learn to write every day always remembering that rewriting is available if it's boring or useless or drivel. Pros use models and patterns that others have developed. They have a process that works for them, but they're perfectly willing to shake up that process if they realize changes are necessary. Essentials. Whether it's the structure that controls a revelatory series of events for the plot, are the essentials of specific sets of characters. These essentials help writers understand the size of the project, the major units of the project, and the smaller elements inside each major unit. Pros consider the major structure and the smaller elements that turn individual words into completed projects. When the old patterns aren't working, they seek out new ways to build their story's foundations. Words aren't the problem. It's the project we're working on and our attitude toward that project. We have to diagnose the problem to determine the solution. I think this barrier or wall between us and our writing can actually fall into three distinct writer's melodies. Here's a diagnostic quiz. Select one of the following problems, A, B, or C. A. You constantly escape from your current project, chasing distractions that prevent your bum from sitting in a chair. B. You delay the hard parts of your writing in order to pursue other writing projects. C. You keep yawning when you should be writing. Select the best description of your writing problem, A, B, or C. A. You find yourself with writing time but you deliberately place yourself far from your writing space. B. You never want to show your writing to anyone because it's not finished. C. When you schedule your writing time, 
You just stare at the screen with no words in your head. Select the best mindset that replicates your inner critic, A, B, or C. A, I have more and more things to do before I can begin writing. B, I keep hearing voices from my past telling me that my writing will never be good enough. C, I don't need to learn anything about writing. These are my words. I won't change them for anyone. If you selected A for two or all three of the symptoms, then you actually have something called writer's refusal. If you answered with two or three as B, then you have writer's procrastination. If you landed primarily in C, you have the worst condition, writer's inertia. We'll deal with top one, writer's refusal, in the next section. Thanks for listening to The Rock Focus, a podcast for writers at all levels, hosted by Emma Lee from Writers Inc. Books, assisted by Remy Black and Edie Runes. Our focus is productivity, process, craft, and tools. Music is licensed through Audio Jungle called Background Music Loop. Its creator is Alexander Polishchuk, known on Audio Jungle as Plastic 3. The music comes in different iterations. Show notes and resource links for this and other episodes can be found at therightfocus.blogspot.com. Write to us at winkbooks at aol.com when you have questions, comments, and speculations. We will try to answer you as quickly as possible. By the way, we will not mind your email address. That's rude. If you find value in our content, share with your writing friends or write a review. We're small beans here without the advertising budget of the big peeps, and you can make a difference. And whatever occurs, right on.